Welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back with quick hits. Um, we're going to get into this Mungia and Berlanga rumor. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a pretty good rumor. Uh, I think it's a fight that should get made. Uh, I think it's got a decent shot of getting made. Um, I have my initial thoughts on it. Um, but before we get into all that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. All approaches to go to autism research and recovery. Um, all right. So, Mungia coming off a win uh, two weeks ago or so against Sergey Derevichenko. Uh, Belanga uh, just coming off a win against Quigley. Which he had to, which he did rally. Uh, both guys rallied um, to score late knockdowns, which kind of won him the fight. Um, I, I think this is an intriguing fight. I, I think this is the fight of all hype, no substance, uh, and, and that's what I'm calling this fight: all hype, no substance. The story of uh, Mugia and Edgar Berlanga. Um, if you look at at their resumes, they are so bad. Like, they are so bad. Um, what Mungia did at 160. I mean, I'm not even going to. Um, Jimmy Kilran Kelly, Demet- uh, Big Meats, Demetrius Ballard, Gabe Rosado, uh, Zamarja, Torreno Johnson, Spike O'Sullivan, and the name before, I don't even know, Gonzalo Gaston Correa. That's his resume at 160. So he won a title at 54. Remember, he was freakishly big. He beat Saddam Ali. He won a couple fights there. Um, Liam Smith, Brandon Cook, uh, Takashi Inoue, and Dennis Hogan, who beat him. Uh, And then after that, it got real. Oh, Patrick Alate, too. That's what he did at 154. At 160, it was egregious what they did for him. He never fought for a world title at 160. He could have won it right into a fight with uh, Demetrius Andre at that time. He could have forced the WBA to do that in the WBA bylaws. Um, he didn't. He fought Spike O'Sullivan, Torino Johnson, and Samarja instead. <laughs> yeah, if you, you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Right? I mean, this is what he did. Um, he never fought anyone decent at 160. They went up to 168 and fought a 160 pounder. That's the guy I'm picking to win the fight. All right. You want to look at Edgar Belanga? You know, uh, he, uh, Edgar Belanga scored 16 consecutive first round knockouts. He's actually got the best win at anything above 154. Now, I, I would say that, uh, is Alexis Angulo. I, I think you know, that was theater uh, last year. O- outside of that, his resume is is atrocious. Um, he's also, he's the same age as, as Mugia. They're both 26. For having been 26, well, I guess Quigley um, is, is, a, is a quality name too. I, I guess Berlanga actually has the better resume. Um, well, I guess Derevchenko would be the best guy, but they took him out of his natural weight class. Derevchenko was a small 160, and they had him go up to 168, which is just ridiculous. Um, but he hasn't scored a knockout since uh, 2020. It's 2023, y'all. <laughs> Those names that he beat, Damond Nicholson, Marcelo Esteban, Steve Rolls, Alexis Angulo, and Quigley. He's 26. 
Why is he still fighting this caliber of fighter? Well, because he's not particularly good. You know, why Why is Munguia fighting that level of name? Well, he's not particularly good. That's why these guys fight at that level. If they were particularly good, if they're... This is not me saying, I don't think they're good. It's not me. This is their promoters telling you that they're not particularly good. So let them fight each other, right? Look, this is a fun fight. And honestly, this is a fight that both camps think they can win. Like, if you're, uh, you know, both teams, if you're Matrum, you're Eddie Hearn, my guy can beat Mugia. Mugia is so hittable. My guy can hit. Mugia is going to walk into something. If you're Oscar, Berlanger is easy to hit, man. My guy can outbox him, and he can hit him. Both teams think they can win this fight. And it's a fight that if you do win, you're going to get a lot of credentials for. Because it's going to be a big stage. I don't know what we have going up. Let, let's do this fight late November, early December, Madison Square Garden. Let's just do it. it, it it's got the Puerto Rico versus Mexican vibe to it. Um, You know, like I said, on paper, it's a 50-50 fight. I have no problem with anyone picking either guy here. I don't think either guy is particularly good. You know, I know Mungi is a former world champ. That was many years ago, many weight classes ago. Um, and, and, you know, the winner is not going to fight Canelo. It's not going to fight Charles. I don't really know what it does, but it's a fun fight. It's an entertaining fight. Um, I, I You know, it, no matter what, Mungi versus Berlanga is an entertaining fight in the ring. So let's, you know what I'm saying? It's an entertaining fight. It's 50, 50 fight. And it, it, honestly, it's a fight that both sides think they can win. And if you lose, so what? Right? It's not like you have some highly touted prospect who's going to fall off the face of the earth if he loses. Whoever loses is in an entertaining fight and isn't very good to start with. Right? I mean, he's just not that good. So if he loses, his stock goes up because he's in an entertaining fight. Like It's like Gaddy Ward won. Who even remembers who won that fight? No one remembers. Mickey Ward won, by the way, right? But no one even remembers who won that fight. It didn't matter. Both guys' stocks jumped up through the roof. Their marketability skyrocketed. You know, I'm not saying this is going to be that, but it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be violent. It's going to be knockdown. It's not going the distance. So let's just see it, right? Let's get this fight. And yes, I'm I, I'm picking Mungia. Uh, I, I think Mungia is 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 more able to to walk Belanger into a big shot. I think Mungia is using his jab a little bit better. I think he has he's more likely to walk Belanger into something, right? I I I, I think Belanger's you know, look Belanger's hype. What Top Rank did with him was so good. They made people think he was going to beat Canelo. Like they, I mean, the the hype they put behind this guy with these 16 first round knockouts was incredible. I, mean, I remember watching him like I don't get it. I got, okay, he's got a bunch of first round knockouts. Fine. Then once he didn't get the guy out in the first round, it was like he's so ordinary and so basic. He doesn't jab. He's not particularly fast. He's not particularly skilled. Right. He can't really control distance. He doesn't really make you go back. Like what is good about him? Other than he had this run of knockouts. You know, his run of knockouts is like winning the Special Olympics and then saying, go compete in the regular Olympics. Like, I don't think he's going to do so well. Um, I don't mean Blank is a terrible fighter. You just beat Quigley. Quigley's a good fighter. All right? Like, Quigley's a quality fighter. You know, on my card, he needed every one of those knockdowns to win. I don't know what the judges were looking at in that fight. Um, but he got four knockdowns. I think he needed every single one of them, honestly. Um, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Um, Blank got it done in the last round. Uh, but I, I I'm behind this. Let, let's make let let's make the fight. Let's get this. You know, again, and where does the winner go after that? I don't know. It doesn't really matter because regardless of who wins, whether it's Blank or it's Munguia, they're not beating Charlo. They're not beating maybe you know they they're, they're not beating Canelo. They're not beating Benavides. They're not beating Morrell. They're not beating Caleb Plant. They're not being any of those names. So what is it really? It's just it's just a good fight. They'll do a good gate. They'll do a good. Let's just make the fight. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, three. Uh, follow me at old form social media. Three D boxing. Three D boxing blog. 
Um, quick hits coming at you every day, eight to ten minutes a day. Please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. Uh, it is June 27th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay.